All right, we're going to take a look at Cakewalk Pro Audio version 9. This is an old program, but very, very useful if you do MIDI. Many, many things you can do with it besides playing MIDI files. an old song by Randy Travis. Just going to take a look at this interface. Shows you all the names of the tracks. Shows you all the channels, channel numbers. 1 to 16. All the patches. Your volume controls, your pan controls. And the size of the bits here related to the individual tracks. This is a fun program to use and it's extremely powerful once you get to know you know your way around the interface. You can solo the tracks. You can mute the tracks. You can also record on the tracks. And the easiest way to do that is with a MIDI keyboard. Because this technology, this program, this software program is, like I said, quite old. Copyright 1991 to 1999. But, uh, very, very useful, even in today's world. Now what you're hearing here today is a Roland JV1010 sound module that I've used for years. I just love this uh, interface, this sound module. You can pick them up pretty cheap, and they still sound great. Lots of drums. Many different features that you can use here. Brush drums. Pop drums. Plus you can edit all of these. start it again. Let's take a look at what's what this piano roll looks like. Got a little click track. Introduce the song. There's your kick, hybrid kick one. And of course you can edit in this window as much as you want to get what you uh, want to achieve. You can make this window smaller. You can make the window larger. Down here in the bottom corner. You can also stop the track. Right click any item here and see the note properties. The timing, the pitch, velocity, duration, the channel. Drums are always on channel 10. And if you want to hear what that particular note sounds like, you just click on it. So it's very, very powerful. Old but powerful. So what you're looking at now is a piano roll for the drum track. Let's take a look at the bass. But this time we're going to look at it differently. We're going to view the staff. Now we all know that a bass guitar normally only has four strings. So you have to set this up. 
Go up to here. Staff View Layout. Check the, check the bass guitar, standard four string. Shows the tablature down here. We'll open up that window one more time. Now the staff properties. We just want to click on base. And that puts it in the right register for the uh, musical S script here. And we got the tablature and the notation, the musical notes. And it's great for learning bass parts too. Sometimes the tablature is not always correct, but you can adjust that if you need to. A lot of open strings are showing here. So there's a way to do that. I'll show, show you that in a later video. So that's kind of nice to see. All right, now we've got uh, guitar. Take a look at that and see what that looks like. In order to get to, to, to the tablature window, you have to stop the song. And then you can make your adjustments here. It's set from bass from the last time. All right, I got to refresh myself on this treble and bass. It's not what I'm after. Let's take a look. Octave treble. That's better. And then we can go into Display tab. And we're just going to go standard six string. And it shows us the guitar down here. It shows the notes, the chords. The tablature is not always spot on. It's not always 100% correct, but it's a great uh, feature to uh, learn songs and study parts. And you can do that with each individual track. So we've got, just double click if you want to change what the um, track name should be. And then click enter. So this is just an overview of the interface of Cakewalk Pro Audio 9. Got your name, the key, the key can actually be changed in this window, but there's better ways of doing that. Effects, the channel is important. They run from 1 to 16. Your port, your interface, we'll get into this deeper. Your banks, all your patches, your individual patches for each track your volume for each track, your pan for each track. Now th this one here, the pan is set up at 64 all the way down the line because normally that's how you would set it up if you wanted to use this particular background track to play live. So you can do a live gig with these MIDI files and they sound great. So that's just an overview of the interface and that's all for now. Europa Man signing off.